Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Since the release of the GeForce GTX 750 Ti graphics card last month, uh, we actually reviewed one of the reference cards that you see here. Mainstream gamers looking to uh, game at resolutions like 1080p, under $200 have found what I think is probably the best option available today. Uh, but this was the reference model, and as you can see in front of us, we have actually have three retail cards here as well. All of these come overclocked. All of them uh, have different coolers than their reference model, and they all have slight changes in their design as well. Let's start with the EVGA model. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 750 Ti FTW, and this uses uh, one of their ACX coolers. The PCB board design is a little bit longer than the reference. Uh, and actually the cooler is even longer than the PCB itself. This does have a six pin power connector on it, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, in terms of display connections, you have a full size display port and a full size HDMI in addition to a dual link DVI connection. Uh, this card comes overclocked with a base clock speed of 1189 megahertz, 1189. Uh, with a boost clock of 1268 megahertz, and the memory runs at its default speed of 5.4 gigahertz, 1350 on the, uh, was what you'll see in GPU-Z. That is an overclock over the reference speed, which was the base clock was 1020, so keep that in mind as we move forward. The Galaxy card is the 750Ti GC model. It also is a longer PCB custom design. It also has a six pin power connector. It has a custom cooler as well. Um, and it, uh, in terms of its display output, it actually has two DVI outputs, a full-size HDMI and a full-size display port. It actually has a display output configuration very similar to what you'll see on the higher end GTX 700 series cards. Its clock speeds are uh, a little bit lower than the EVGA, base clock of 1111 and a boost clock of 1189, memory running at the same 1350 megahertz or 5.4 gigahertz if you do the math. Finally, we have the PNY. This is the GTX 750 Ti. It's an OC model, Accelerate, XLR8 is kind of the designation here. It's much more uh, closely sized to the reference card. It's a shorter PCB. It does not have a six pin power connector. Um, it's uh, still got a custom cooler on it. It does run quieter than the reference model by a little bit. The display output configuration, however, is the same as the reference model, two DVI connections and one mini HDMI connection. So it's a little bit more limited in that route, but it's essentially using the same as this card was using. It's just using a double height bracket as opposed to uh, what we had on the reference model. Now, the clock speed of that card is actually surprisingly the highest. Its uh, base clock is 1202 megahertz with its top boost clock at 1281 or its rated boost clock at 1281. And also they've overclocked the memory on this card from 1350 to 1500. So this is actually gonna run at six gigahertz GDDR5. So that's actually interesting that the smallest card without the six pin PCI connector is actually running at the highest out of box clocks. Now obviously in terms of out of box performance, based on those clock speeds, you have a pretty good idea of where these are going to stack. They're all three faster than the reference card, uh, and they kind of go in order of the clock speeds. The Galaxy is the slowest of the three, followed by the EVGA, followed by the PNY being the fastest. Those differences are gonna be fairly small uh, in terms of what you actually see in games like Metro Last Light or Battlefield 4, uh, but there are going to be differences. Now, rated boost clocks are one thing, but we wanted to see in our performance testing where these clocks actually reached to. It's kind of interesting to think about because even though the Galaxy card, for example, is rated at a typical boost clock of 1189, the boost clocks would go a little bit higher, and thanks to the custom coolers on these, we actually see a little bit more range on that result. Uh, the Galaxy card, as I mentioned, has a rated clock of 1189, but after running Metro Last Light for 8 to 10 minutes, we actually saw it reach 1267 megahertz relatively easily. That's kind of where it capped out at, so a, a healthy boost over the rated speed. For the EVGA card, uh, its rated boost clock was 1268 megahertz, but it actually ended up running at 1320. So we're seeing a range now, the reference base clock from 1020 all the way up to 1320 on the EVGA card, which is pretty nice. The PMY card had a rated uh, boost clock of 1281 megahertz, but it actually hit 1332, just a little bit higher than the EVGA card. So these clock speeds are actually getting pretty high. Um, power consumption is a little bit higher on these 
retail models as opposed to the reference one. We saw anywhere from 201 to 210 watts power consumption. All three were very close together, all kind of grouped, uh, which is also, again, interesting to think about because of the inclusion of six-pin power connections on two of them, uh, but not on the PNY card. Noise levels is one of the main areas where they differ, uh, where they differ rather. The reference card was pretty quiet, actually. Even though it had a small heat sink with a relatively small fan, it was relatively quiet as well. Um, when we tested these three retail cards under load for noise levels, the EVGA was actually the loudest. It was rated at 37.8 dBA, while the Galaxy card was at 33.4 and the PNY card was actually 31.9. So obviously it only has one fan, so it kind of makes sense that it would be a little bit lower, but it's significantly lower than what the EVGA card was able to do and a little bit lower than what the Galaxy card was able to do. If you took a look at the fan speeds, uh, there's, there appears to be a limitation on the EVGA card where it was basically running at 42% fan speed at idle as well as when we were uh, running it under a full load. So that's kind of a limitation of how they've implemented their fan controller. The other cards didn't have that problem and were able to, we were able to see differences in noise levels at idle versus low. The EVGA card was actually pretty static the whole time. Obviously you guys want to know about overclocking as well. These cards all did relatively well and, and kind of came into within uh, the same types of margins that we saw with their uh, reference or their out-of-box clock speeds. The, uh, the, the top base clock we're able to hit was on the PNY card at 1292 megahertz, followed by the EVGA at 1289 and the Galaxy at 1231. Those were kind of our stable overclock. So it ranges from plus 90 offset up to plus uh, 120 offset. But again, because the base clocks differ, uh, that aren't necessarily the best numbers to result in or to, to base that on. The clock speeds that we're able to see them run at reliably, again, looking at boost clocks in GPU-Z when they're overclocked, was 1,423 megahertz on the PNY card, 1,419 on the EVGA, and 1,387 on the Galaxy. So again, the PNY card was running at the highest clock speeds. It wasn't, uh, I would say, as static at that clock speed as the EVGA card was. The EVGA card hit 1,419 megahertz, 1,419 megahertz uh, flat. Like, it was able to run that easily without a problem uh, for the full, you know, 8 to 10 minute runs that we did there. Um, so, all these cards were impressive. The PNY seemed to be the most impressive, followed by the EVGA, followed by the Galaxy. We did run mining tests as well. We were able to get uh, just about 326 kilohashes on these in their overclocked state, which is a little bit better, like 10, 11% better than the reference card in its overclocked state. So if you're interested in that type of metric, you can kind of see where they rest there. Pricing wise, it's a little bit uh, hard to give you a firm number at this point. The, the EVGA card is currently selling on Newegg for $179. The Galaxy and PNY card, as we record this, weren't listed on Newegg, but they were listed on their individual websites for $159 each. Uh, the PNY card and the Galaxy card were being sold directly on, on, those webs on their own websites with that. Um, that being said, the PNY card at $159 comes out of the box the fastest card. It overclocked the best. It was the quietest card. It is also the one that doesn't have a six pin power connection. So we really, I, I'm really kind of doubting uh, how much of an advantage there is to even adding a six pin power connection to the 750Ti GPU. It doesn't seem to have added anything relevant for performance or stability or overclocking to the Galaxy or the EVGA cards. All three of these options are, are, are pretty good. I wouldn't have any qualms about recommending them to any users. Um, the EVGA card is going to be the most easily found. We were able to find that on Newegg and Amazon. The other ones seem a little bit harder to locate currently, uh, but it also has the highest price and it has the loudest fan noise. So if that's a concern for you, you might want to avoid it. The PNY, smallest, still requires two slots. Doesn't require six pin power, overclocks the best. I think that's easily the winner out of this group. Probably followed by the EVGA and then to the Galaxy. But like I said, all three of these are, are fairly tight in terms of, of how they perform and compare to each other. Check out uh, the review if you want to see more of the individual game benchmarks at PCPer.com. We've also got screenshots of our overclocking uh, results and things like that. And we'll have links to most up-to-date pricing availability as well. Thanks, guys.